I know I'm a little late to the party. Hopefully I'm not that late. Hopefully I get some people watching this video. <laughs> Sony just announced the Sony A6700. Normally I would be very excited, but in a second, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not all the way excited. However, I still may get this camera. Stay tuned. It's been almost four years since the release of the Sony A6600. When this camera was announced, I immediately went online and pre-ordered this camera because I needed to get this camera. As you know, this channel is dedicated to Sony APS-C user. I am a Sony APS-C user. I have used full frame cameras. I prefer Sony APS-C cameras for a couple of reasons. One of those things being the price and the amazing quality you can get for the money. But when this camera first came out, I was extremely excited. I was actually overjoyed. A camera that had amazing video features for the time, amazing photo features for the time, which to be perfectly honest with you, hasn't really upgraded much in the 6700. But the autofocus blew everybody's camera out of the water, including some of the Sony full frame options. That's one of the reasons why I got this Sony A6600. After that, I wind up getting another one of these, the Sony ZV-E10 and the Sony FX30. I am primarily a video shooter. I do live streams, I do videos out and about, do YouTube videos. On occasion, I do weddings, some professional video promotional stuff, but I am a Sony APS-C user because I can produce amazing qualities on a budget without breaking the bank, and to be told, I'm not here to impress you. You may be impressed by full frame cameras, but if you can get amazing quality video, specifically video with APS-C sensors, you're straight. But Sony just released and or announced the release of the Sony A6700. Now, let me tell you what I'm disappointed about. It seems like Sony has become like the new Canon and companies like Fujifilm and uh, Panasonic, they're now becoming the new Sonys. At a time when Ca Canon was king in the vlogging and content creation space, when everybody was getting a Can Canon camera, I wanted to get the Sony. I was using a Lumix G7, a Lumix G85 at the time, but everybody was getting the, the Canon um, 90D or 70D or 80D. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I need to get all that, for, you know, amazing quality, amazing autofocus, but I don't think I need all that. Then Sony came out with this camera at a decent price point with features that outshined the Canon cameras. And it seemed like for years, Sony was following in that same frame where they were releasing cameras that far outperformed those of their competitors because they were looking to take over the market. Now, it seems like Sony is now a big dog in the content creation space. And they have now become the new Canon. Not looking to do amazing upgrades to their cameras and not looking at the competition saying, okay, my competitors are doing this, so I am going to do that at a lower price point to steal their competitors. I, may f I love Sony, so Sony, if you're watching this, I say this in love. I feel like you guys now feel like the big dogs in this space and now you're trying to do the bare minimum because you don't need to do the maximum because you already got your clientele. And if that's the case, I think it's pretty whack because you have people like Panasonic who was decent in the uh, in the content creation space with their Lumix brand cameras, the Micro Four, four Thirds cameras uh, with amazing features, mind you. And now Fujifilm coming out with amazing cameras and truth be told, some of the specs you're not even trying to match. I don't know what your end game here is, but because I'm invested in the Sony ecosystem, I'm not going with any other camera system. And the thing is, I think the executives over at Sony, you guys, if you're watching this, you know that. You know we're not going to go anywhere because we already invested so much money in this ecosystem. You guys have, in the mirrorless space, the best lens options. So you're like, okay, we got the best lenses. Nobody can compete, especially with the addition of third-party brands 
making lenses. Nobody can compete with what we can offer, so we don't have to put what our competitors are doing in their cameras. But here's the thing. In like two or three years, Fujifilm and Panasonic may just take over the mirrorless space, especially the APS-C, if Sony doesn't think about doing things better than their competitors. So Sony, you guys have to step up because you're going to find yourself like Canon felt in like two, three years ago when you guys were coming out with these great cameras and they were trying to catch up to you. Soon, you're going to find yourself trying to catch up to the other camera brands. But now on to the Sony A6700 and why I am probably going to pre-order this camera. It is a perfect blend of the Sony A6600 and the Sony FX30. It's like an explosion happened and they made like the perfect hybrid camera. This camera is a video beast, the Sony FX30. And inside the new Sony A6700, you have the same 26 megapixel sensor that's in the FX30, which means that the quality of video you're going to get out of the Sony A6700 is the same quality you'll get from this professional APS-C cinema grade camera. Additionally, it has all the same features minus the Cine EI that this camera has, okay? It also has the same photo features that the Sony A6600 has. They didn't really do any major updates there. Uh, and one thing I am disappointed in, and this is where I'm talking about how they are not, because they're kings in this space right now, everybody else is playing catch up and they're trying to do put features in their cameras that far, you know, outdoes Sony, that Sony feels like they don't have to do anything because shooting 11 frames per second in electronic shutter is kind of weak, to be perfectly honest with you, for uh, the top tier hybrid Sony APS-C camera. So I think that they, they, did, they did cheapen out in that area. But it's pretty much the same when it comes to photo specs, except for the higher megapixel sensor. But the Sony A6600 um, has a flip up screen like this. Now, I got to be honest with you. I didn't like it at first, but what I found out, and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison once I get the Sony A6700, I found that it's easier to record yourself if you have a flip up screen, to be honest with you, because, and I'll tell you why, and the mic set here is fine by me because when you are looking at the camera, right, you can, like, without the audience noticing, you can peek up at your framing and be straight. But now, if I look here, right, and if I talk here, you know that I'm talking, I'm looking at my um, screen because on the Sony ZV-E10, which I'm filming this on right now, the flip out screen is to the right. So if I'm talking, looking at myself here, you can tell that I'm not looking at the lens, I'm looking at the screen. But with the Sony A6600 with the flip up screen, you can. it's hard to tell or hard to notice that I'm looking at myself and looking at my framing when I'm shooting a video. Another thing is the Sony A6700 is lighter than the Sony A6600, but it's a little bit bigger. And I think it's lighter because of the mechanism that exists within the flip up screen here. The Sony A6700 has a flip out screen much like the Sony FX30. It's a flip out screen, just like this, okay? But this has a flip up screen like this, which is fine to be honest with you, uh, uh, but the mechanism, the metal piece that exists here is probably the reason why it's so much lighter yet bigger than the Sony A6600. Um, again, I'm getting a camera and I am probably gonna enjoy it even if it has a flip out screen. I don't really look at the screens anymore as is. I know how to record videos looking straight into the lens. But if I had to like check my framing, I would rather look up at the camera like I'm doing right now. I'm not sure if you can tell. Or I would, instead of looking to the right because then it looks obvious that I'm looking at myself in the camera. But out of those things, I think the Sony A6700 is a good camera to get, especially if you are a Sony APS-C user, if you have Sony APS-C lenses, or if you are looking to get into more professional grade quality 
filming with video and photos, but you don't want to break the bank. It's probably a good camera to get. I, I'm not really much of a spec junkie. I want to see what the image looks like and the type of quality it can produce. Um, you guys can look up a lot of the other YouTubers out there who do spec reviews of cameras, but I like more real world hands-on experience and sharing that. So once I get the camera, I'm going to do a comparison with the Sony a6600, which I'm probably going to sell or trade in. I'm going to do a comparison with the Sony FX30, and I'm going to do a comparison with the camera that I'm filming on right now, the Sony ZV-E10, which has the same sensor as the Sony a6600. So I am excited that it has a, a, a better, a higher megapixels, um, and it's supposed to perform pretty much just like the Sony FX30, 10-bit uh, 422 as opposed to the 8-bit 420 that the Sony a6600 has in video and the Sony ZV-E10. So I'm excited. Um, but Sony, I, I'm going to close this video by saying this. Don't let Fujifilm, don't let Canon, who has now stepped up their product, and don't let Lumix lap you. You, for years was ahead of the game when it comes to technology and producing amazing product with your cameras. Please don't think that now that you're king, you can lower the bar because you guys have a huge clientele because truth be told, it's not a lot for anybody to sell all their equipment and start fresh, especially if they're in a professional space. So uh, don't let these other camera brands lap you because I am a Sony user, I love your products, but at the end of the day, we're looking to make great product with the most bang for our buck. And if you're not going to produce that, you may lose some clientele. All right. So if you're watching this video, you made it this far, hit the like button. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you feel like I've added any value to you today. All right. Until the next upload, I'm out. Peace.